Back in 2021, the NASCAR Cup Series would race its first race on dirt since the 1970 season by covering the Bristol Motor Speedway completely in dirt. This was definitely an interesting move by NASCAR and one that's still kind of hit or miss with fans today. But that 2021 race wasn't the first time that Bristol Motor Speedway was covered in dirt as the World of Outlaws visited the track in the year 2000. The idea came about when several Bristol Motor Speedway executives went out to SMI's newest track, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and saw the Outlaws hit the dirt track outside the NASCAR Speedway. In the year 2000, they would make it happen by hauling over 14,000 truckloads of dirt and dumping it on the Speedway. And they would make sure that they would make it as big Big as possible by bringing in America's top dirt racing series, the World of Outlaws. First of all, on the racetrack for this Channel Lock Challenge, they applied a thin layer of sawdust to make for easy removal. See the sawdust over there? Then the dump trucks started to arrive. They came, they came, they came. 1,400 dump truck loads. The dirt hold only a mile though, so the in and out cost is really quite low, $150,000. And I'll tell you before the night is over, you will see it was worth more than that. A record-breaking crowd for the Outlaws, as at all the tracks they race at, nothing is remotely as close to the scale of Bristol Motor Speedway, and by the time the A-Main rolled around, 27 of the World of Outlaws' best would go at it for the first ever main event dirt race at Bristol. The traditional salute to the crowd, and look at this! That's a back straightaway where you said people weren't sitting? That's why they're not sitting there. <laughs> Man, I tell you, they know how to do it. They just know how to do it. It's SMI tracks, all of them. Look at the cameras, camera flashes yep. going off. Yep. Kodak's making a fortune here. <laughs> wow. Uh, is that a sight? Man, this gives me goosebumps. This, this, I, this, to My see, goosebumps are bigger than your goosebumps. <laughs> to see the World of Outlaws drawing crowds like this, at stadiums basically like this, we can call this a stadium, I guess, with the grandstands all the way around. And our congratulations to Wayne Estes and Jeff Bird of this Speedway who had the vision to put this on and have executed it so well. Dave Argabright. The race was loaded with World of Outlaws legends like Sammy Swindell and Steve Kinzer. Defending champion Mark Kinzer was on the front row with another legend that's still doing it to this day, Donnie Schatz alongside him. Here we go guys, it's gonna be fun. We got our arms up even in the booth. Elbows up, Brad Doty, Steve Evans. How about Donnie Schatz? The 15 car, the yellow machine, is shot out of a cannon on the start. Started outside the front row. Falling in behind him in the second position. He said Sammy Swindell. Well, I'll bet some people lost some money on that, betting on Mark Kinzer to take the lead. Donnie shots like he was shot out of a cannon, takes the lead and starts pulling away immediately. You can see the incredible speeds by these cars going around this track. It's almost like equivalent to Daytona and Talladega for sprint cars as they were wide open the whole time around the track. But it's amazing how much your lines and driving style can make a difference as these cars, despite being wide open, create huge huge separation, but as quickly as gaps can be made, they can also be closed up. The first yellow flag of the race would come out just three laps in when Tyler Walker would get looped around. In the World of Outlaws, the caution laps do not count. As you can see, if you're new to World of Outlaws racing, it's only a 30 lap main event, so caution laps do not count. I will say real quick, unfortunately, during this whole broadcast, any incident that happened during the race, no replays were shown, which was kind of weird, but that's just kind of what it is. Donnie Schott continues to lead a little rooster tail of dirt off the rear tires of these cars. Donnie Schott, Sammy Swindell. Swindell has had this place figured out since the very beginning. Low qualifier yesterday, low qualifier today. Should have won last night. Can he pull it off tonight? Well, that traffic will be the key. There's Stevie Smith and Mark Kenzer for battle for fourth. With 19 laps to go, the king of sprint car racing, the man who ended his Outlaws career with 690 feature wins and 20 championships, was putting pressure on Donnie Schatz to take the lead of the race. The 11 Quaker State car, Sammy Swindell also pitches by Donnie Schatz for the second spot, regained second spot. Well, when Donnie had, when he, when he flinched there, when Steve Kenzer went by him, it just killed his momentum and it let Sammy get a run on him and get off and beat him off a of turn two. 
Oh, Darren Pittman with a blown right rear tire, shredded. And that's going to bring out a caution, guaranteed, yeah. sitting right in the middle of the race, like a sitting duck. Things would go from bad to worse for Donnie Schatz after losing the lead there, as under this caution, he would end up retiring from the race as it was discovered that a rock punctured his radiator in the car, and that would put an end to his night. Unfortunately, there's no way of really telling in these sprint cars, so Donnie wouldn't even really know until it was too late. With 13 laps down, 13 laps down, yeah. Oh, Sammy. look at this, look at this. Sammy's got a big run off of two, there he goes. Arguably the two biggest names, no, not arguably, the two biggest names in winged sprint car racing, Sammy Swindell and Steve Kim. Between them, 18 years of championships. 18, 15 for the green car, three for the blue one. Wow, and he just drove by Steve, too. Sammy, Sammy always has been good on the real high speed, uh -huh. real fast racetracks. He, even going back to the one mile they used to run at Syracuse, yep. New York, New York State Fair. Sammy, as we said, performance-wise has been so dominant. Two World of Outlaw heavyweights going at it as Sammy Swindell wasted no time on that restart to take the lead away from Steve Kinzer off at of turn number two. With 11 laps to go, the third caution of the race would come out when the 28 car of Brian Paulus found himself facing backwards down on the inside of the track. This would leave a restart with 12 laps to go and Sammy Swindell trying to hold off Steve Kinzer and the rest of the outlaws behind him. We'll have an on board with Stevie Smith who is currently in the number three slot, and he's looking back at Steve Kinzer. Mark Kinzer. Well, with only 12 left to go, I'm kind of surprised that Mark's back there struggling at this point, uh, this late in the race. Well, Stevie's missing the Kinzer sandwich, one in front of him, one behind him. Let's go back up front, Sammy Swindell and Steve Kinzer running first and second, and there's Stevie Smith coming right in on him. Steve goes low, the other Steve goes high. Steve's struggling right now. He, he went to the bottom trying to find something. He's desperately loose, it looks like. When he goes down there like that, gives Stevie Smith all that momentum around the top to get a run on him. Now, when we see the dirt coming off these rear wheels, is that just dust blowing up or are they spinning the tires? Well, you always can spin the tires in, in a wing sprint car, but uh, it's just dust flying up. It's, again, it's a hard-packed racetrack. It's the second night on it. As Sammy Swindell was cruising away with only five laps to go, the red flag would be deployed as a 28 car of Brian Paulus would find himself in trouble again, but this time there was no continuing as he was upside down and somehow perfectly balancing on that wing. Usually those things crumple like a beer can and the car will kind of go on its side, but this car is perfectly balanced upside down, which is kind of incredible. But the cleanup due to this would result in a red flag as the World of Outlaws cars only have a certain amount of fuel on board so running around under caution would not be good and it's a shame that there's no replay of this to see how this happened we're going green and on point is sammy swindell the blue channel lock car boy what a restart too as you see stevie turn back underneath the state uh steve kinzer there just still can't quite get it done and look at this kinzer goes high no oh, there he goes go. oh baby now on these red flags that they they can work on the race cars and change setups they cannot change tires or they have to go to the rear but they can change setups and uh, weight settings and shocks and things like that it looks like stevie smith whatever they did it's working Brian for sammy because he's been in this position White a flag. lot lately and it had a go away there's the kinzers going head to head see sparks off the steve cars he goes in the frames hitting the racetrack you see some sparks so steve kinzer Running third behind Stevie Smith and Sammy Swindell. This is the final lap. This is it. The Channel Lock Challenge. Won by the Channel Lock car. Won by the Channel Lock car. The race they said would never happen has happened. With the biggest crowd in the history of sprint car racing on a single day, maybe even for a weekend, with an almost perfect racetrack with a perfect safety record. Randy Kinzer, as we prefer, is okay. And now let's top it off, ladies and gentlemen, as only old Bruton Smith. And his gang know how to do it. Speedway Motorsports with fireworks going on. God, you gotta love this place. Sammy Swindell, dirt racing legend, scores the first ever win on dirt at Bristol Motor Speedway. As this event was a big success, they would run late models on another weekend and they would bring the Outlaws back in the year 2001. But that would end up being the end of dirt racing as it was a huge amount of work to prep the track and put on these races. And let's face it, the world of Outlaws just doesn't have the reach and fan base of NASCAR, especially in the year 2000 when NASCAR was at its peak.
But 20 years later in 2021, the dirt would return to Bristol as I mentioned in the beginning of the video. NASCAR would host its first race since 1970 on dirt and they would actually use dirt that was originally from this race to put the dirt on the speedway as they kept it in storage all those years. And with NASCAR racing on the dirt, this gave the opportunity for the outlaws to return to Bristol in which they did, but unfortunately it is not on the 2023 World of Outlaws calendar. If you want to watch the full broadcast for this race, you can find it on the Dirt Vision website. You can watch it for completely free as well as other classic sprint car races and I'll link it down in the description below. That's going to wrap up today's video, thank you guys so much for tuning in this is my first world of outlaws video so i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to do more in the future if this is your first time on my channel subscribe for more motorsports history videos just like this and i hope to see you guys in my next one take care everybody